Let's talk to Lord Warner. Lord Norma Warner is a former Labour Health Minister and he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, uh, let, let's talk first of all about um, uh, those uh, really, really rather worrying uh, you know, stats on, well, the decision on the cancer targets. Um, this has been confirmed from the Prime Minister that they're going to uh, drop an awful lot of the targets involved with what, you know, you should see a consultant within two weeks after being referred or this person or that person. Do you think that's the right decision? Because the government, it says this is what the actual um, health experts have suggested should happen. But a lot of people are worried this means we're just going to be seeing even longer waits for treatment. Well, they haven't met those targets since about 2015, before the pandemic. So uh, the NHS had just failed at that level for quite a long period of time. What we've got now is a situation where they've really thrown in the towel, as far as I can see. The targets were there for a purpose, and they did work. And they did get the NHS to actually address the issues of getting people to specialist treatment as fast as possible. We seem to have given up on that idea. Yeah, I mean that that is that is a big concern, isn't it? Um, now, you, you, an analysis um, by the House of Commons Library for the Labour Party has shown that uh, a million patients have been hit by delays to cancer care in the last ten months. Tell us about that. Well, I think what we're seeing is this situation where people are becoming resigned to the idea that they won't be able to get much of this treatment from the NHS. Yeah. And we're seeing some people simply drifting away. If you just look at a one company's profits yesterday, one private company, health company's profits yesterday, huge increase in their profits because people are moving away from the NHS yeah. to seek that care somewhere else. Well, again, all very well if you can afford to do that or if your company happens to offer that to you and your family and you can pay the, often it's a supplement for you, for, you know, if you to include your, your other half and your kids involved in it. Most people don't have, the vast, vast majority of people in this country don't have private health care, couldn't dream of affording private health care, even, you know, the extra two quid to see a consultant privately or get um, diagnostic tests privately that's not an option for people we know you know basically if you have cancer in this country you you've got a higher chance of dying as a result of being treated in the uk than if you were treated in france germany uh, the netherlands or indeed many eastern european countries that is a damning indictment of our health system isn't it it is indeed. I'm, I'm not advocating that people should go private. I'm just simply saying that some people are making that yeah. decision to do it. And what we're seeing now is the NHS seems to have thrown in the towel. Yeah. I mean, dropping if 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 they're dropping targets which are were there for a purpose, it means they are almost giving up the idea that they should actually get people diagnosed quickly and in front of a specialist to start treatment. The most critical target is when you've got a diagnosis that's 62 days to start treatment that is a critical target uh, they've still retained that target but i don't see any management system in place to ensure that it gets hit yeah but again i get the idea that 62 days that's two months every single fortnight i'm so many friends have been going through breast cancer every fortnight you delay treatment you're looking at an extra five percent chance of dying I mean, it, this is, it's insane. It's absolutely insane that people should be waiting. And, and again, with so few people with the option of buying, buying themselves out of that system. 15 years ago, we were getting people to specialist treatment around about three to four weeks um, yeah. across large swathes of the country. That has simply gone from our, our DNA. We just don't do it anymore. And uh, w what we're saying is the NH, as I say again, what we're seeing is the NHS, if experts have actually supported this idea, they're throwing in the towel. Yeah, and that's um, bad news for patients. That certainly is a, is a worry. Um, there's also a story today about how artificial intelligence AI is going to be fast-tracked to hospitals under new plans to overhaul the way the NHS works with businesses. Um, um, and NHS chiefs vowed to speed up this rollout of the latest medical technologies uh, like AI and robotics to patients. Um, and companies have previously had to apply to supply the NHS by filling out dozens of forms, very long processes, including different hospitals to supply the same product. They want to make this rather more streamlined. This can only be a good thing, can't it? Because this is still, aren't we, the NHS, isn't it still the biggest purchaser in the world of pages and fax machines? I mean, we're still living in the dark ages. Oh, absolutely. Anything which actually improves the NHS IT is actually a good thing because it is a lot of it is actually extremely poor and we're still using paper far too much 
within the NHS. And the yeah. private sector has complained for years about some of the contracting processes yeah. in the NHS. Absolutely. Really appreciate you joining us, Lord Warner, former Labour Health Minister. Thank you for that.